on a new story on Amisi TV. Today, I have with me here one of the big man, one of the uh, bankers in Ghana here. When you are talking about banking aspects, he's a very heavy man. So today, we are come to talk about his lifestyle small and how we have gotten to so far. So let me do a small commercial break. When I come, I will introduce the man himself or the man himself will introduce himself. Then we dive into what you are come to talk about it today. Before you now call about Edoba and Missy TV, on the way I'm introduction to you. So I have with me here one of the heavy man, one of the heavy loaded man in my set, in my sight. So that's what. So boss, welcome on Missy TV. Thank you, thank you very much. So uh, I probably I don't want to uh, say something to somebody. So maybe you have decreased my uh, position or something. So I want you to mention <laughs> your full name for me. My full name is Carl Anda. Carl Anda. Carl. Under. Under. And okay. a lot of people properly known as let me uh, let me add that one properly known as a lot of my friends call me Kaliman. Kaliman, yeah. yes. And um a lot of people um always I always have to correct people with the spelling of the my C. name. Okay. It's with a K, not a C. The C. And uh, I just detest the the C. The C are the British. Okay. The K are the Germans. Okay. I love the Germans. You love the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> as a that one there is good. Yes sir. Not the uh, the key one. Yes sir. Okay. Yes sir. So, uh, Mr. Ka, when you talk about you, how, how was your education level started? Did you start your education level in Ghana here or you started in outside? No, thank you very much. I started, I was born in Ghana and I did my uh, primary schooling um, at Legon. My father was a lecturer, so we lived on campus and I went to university primary school. Okay. Um, when I was done with university primary school, I went to the number one school in Ghana, which is called Prempe College. Prempe. Yes. Hey, so. this one there, it's like you are throwing, you are throwing <laughs> <laughs> stone in the park. Oh, yeah, People but will not understand you. Oh, they do. They, they, they understand. They understand. They, they just don't want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I went to Prempe College. Um, I went uh, one to five, and then um, I was fortunate enough to continue my education in the United States. Oh, okay. So I went to college, um, the university in the United States. I went to Temple University where I obtained a double major in marketing and then in finance. Okay. And then um, once I was done, I got a job with JP Morgan Chase, the bank. It's now the biggest bank in the world. Um, I was one of their um, relationship um, managers in New York, Delaware, and uh, Maryland. Okay. And I did that for a while. While I was there, I went and did my MBA. Um, in the day, in those days, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase paid for us to go to edu uh, further ed our education. So I took advantage of that and got my MBA, International uh, Business Finance, okay. um, from the University of Delaware. Okay, uh, let me say, uh, let's go to education level some more. Let me bring this topic outside, this outside topic, uh, let me bring into our conversation some more. Once, uh, let me say, that time on your education aspect, and right now our education aspect, which time, which one you see uh, is more improving? Well, when you say it's more improving, you mean, are you trying to say which one is much better for much the citizen? Much better for the citizen. Well, uh, complaining about your time. Yes. It's, it's, it's difficult for me to say because um i didn't have the opportunity to go through the ss or the shs um, that time there is no ss it's form yeah. four yes well in my day it was form five form and five. then after form five you go to upper six, upper six. lower six and upper six okay. so i do not know um and i cannot uh, sit here and tell you this new system is better than the old, old system. system i i just cannot um tell you but okay I, what i can say is i see um, new breeds coming up every day as well um so definitely something must be working something must be yeah, working yeah. but it's not working so that's that that's a, just a way of caution but let's let's get into the more business we are here so uh let's say as as a man who was working in the bank the bank system bank aspect so let's let's dive into the bank aspect for you so far well um i did like i said i worked for jp morgan chase and then in 2006, I came back to Ghana um, to help set up Fidelity Bank. Okay. Um, I was the head of private banking. Um, and then I was head on the corporate uh, banking desk as well. Um, in 2014, I returned back to the United States. 
Okay. Um, um, due to some personal um, family uh, reasons, uh, the children, the wife. Um, so we went back. Um, and when we went back is when I decided to get myself involved in what I really, really liked to do in my life, which was aviation. Aviation. Um, so I got into aviation, did some training, um, and then I joined uh, Flight Safety International, a very renowned uh, aviation school slash uh, um, corporate environment for, for airplanes. Okay. Um, and I was there for about four years um, in various capacities. Um, I did sales for them. We sold planes. I did uh, administrative uh, work for them. Okay. I also did some uh, training, pilot training for them as well. And I'll, I'll delve into uh, pilot training in a few minutes. But, yes, um, yes, that is why I got a lot of the aviation um, 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 ex uh, techniques and learning. And while I was there, I kept on thinking about Africa as a whole, Ghana, Africa as a whole. And I realized we didn't have that kind of uh, infrastructure in our environment. So I had to think about it. I said to think about it. And like I said, um, as we go along, I'll tell you more, more about the reason why um, yes. I guess I'm speaking to you, um, which would be half wing, but we'll get yeah. to it in the few. So le let's, let, me, let me go straight to this point where you are brought in aviation inside. As a bank man, shifting from the bank and going to aviation uh, side. You know, Emmanuel, it was, it was God given. I, when I was a little boy, I had little miniature airplanes. Okay. So if you ask me, a plane is flying right now, you ask me, what kind of air, air, airplane is that? You I can, can mention tell you, it. Yeah. Uh, because I, 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 I read about them, I, I used to go to Kodoka International Airport and they sit there and watch the planes land and take off. That was my Just hobby. Like that. Yes, That's that was hobby. my hobby. And I could tell you if it was a perfect landing or if it wasn't a perfect landing. That's I could tell you if the wind was blowing against the aircraft, I could also tell you. Um, so I knew a lot. I really wanted to be a pilot. You wanted to be a pilot. You wanted to shift from the bank to a pilot. When I was a child, I wanted to become a pilot, but my father said, no, you want to, you go to school and go and become a bank guy. And in those days he was paying the, the school fees. So okay. you don't have I had no option. Yes. To finish yes. what you want. After yes. that, you, to, you come out your throat. Yes. So I went, when I went back, I studied, I learned how to fly okay. when I went back um, to after US. 2014. Yeah. Okay. And, and then um, I left um, back to where I was. I left Fly Safety International. Okay. And I joined a company called Panam Academy. Okay. It's a subset of Panam Airlines. You know, Panam Airlines used to fly back in the day. They went out of business, but the the training facility is still there. Everybody from across the world comes to train there. Okay. I was one of the principal directors of the training school. Training school. Yes. And in that in that position, I had to fly across all over the world to get airlines companies to come and train with us because we're competing with the likes of Boeing. You may not understand what I mean by Boeing, but we're competing with the likes of Boeing and Maybe somebody Airbus. Somebody who is listening to us will also dive into So Airbus and Boeing okay. are the manufacturers of the aircraft that you see out okay. there. Yes. So typically, if a country like Ghana buys an aircraft, aircraft. and they buy a Boeing, their pilots typically will go to Boeing in the US to train. To train before he will, before he will fly, fly or she will fly. But now we had this company called Panam that had the same training facilities. Okay. So you could come to Panam and train at a cheaper price compared okay. to you going to Boeing. Boeing. Yes, so those were our competitors. Okay. Yes. So that's the both of uh, that's the two share two company who are holding the uh, the monopoly. Yes. yes. From this country to another. Exactly. To how to maybe to be a perfect to be a perfect to drive us a plane or a, to fly a, a plane. To fly a plane. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so let me say, I, I yeah. say you travel from Ghana to other countries, comparing our country as same, uh, uh, putting our country to maybe on foot. Mm -hmm. So traveling to other countries, why you can say why Ghana? We are not people are saying we are not still developed and our pain aspect or our because I heard, uh, I read some news whereby Ghana we are first can African country we have plane. Right now, there is it's no uh, it's no there again. We you don't have those kind of uh, our ownership of that plane. Why? Well, Emmanuel, that's a that's a very very interesting question you ask. Um, the aviation industry in Africa is still young and growing. 
it's still young it's young yes and it's growing i believe that the future of aviation is going to be from africa okay i mean we have we have so much to give that we haven't yet found ourselves found to out. give and that's africa okay. not ghana okay. but africa now the question about ghana being the first country to have an airline, airline. Um, yeah, it's it's fine, but you know I also go back to the economic the economics of it. Do you want a government to run and that institution, or you want it to be privately owned? We don't. We we are not here to talk about that. I understand. Okay. But yes, that is where the the discussion can come in, okay. and I'm hoping that um, very soon there will be a roundtable discussion on aviation, the future of aviation in Ghana, or for that matter in Africa. And hopefully we will be invited to the table okay. to try to give our two Opinion. cents on that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just so right now, as for that, uh, as for right now, there you would think private entity should own our aviation airline. You see, it all depends on the on the economics, the economics. On, the, on the economics of the country. Yes. Okay. Um, you can take a country like I'll give you an example. Um, like South Africa or no. in Africa. Well, country. let's lose. Let's lose. Let's use Kenya. Kenya. Kenya Airways um, was privately owned. The government had this a little portion of it. Portion. And now, government of Kenya wants to get rid of their portion and make it fully Kenya private. airline yeah. as a private. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's, it's because of the economics. They realize that, look, the government doesn't have to be part of this. You can take another small country like Togo and, and say, Togo, you guys, we're gonna, you guys have an airline. The people of Togo, do they have enough private investment to invest in an airline or would they need the backing of their, ca their country if you need the backing of the government then yes absolutely so it depends on the economics okay okay that's for that one they will give it to the economists to run about that one you know it's easy for people to say yeah you know ghana was the first country to have an aircraft airline and you know we let it go and now we want it back and it's we want to privatize it we want to make it government owned it's all the there's a lot of economics involved in it okay yes and okay. so we have to just be careful and mindful careful about. Yeah. okay so uh let's let, let's come down so right now as a being as a citizen in ghana mm. and running of those kind of company trying to push our agenda forward trying to help people to learn how to fly plane maybe stopping your own business as a, a bank manager and moving to aviation for so how was it your challenge about all those kind of things you are being through right now you know Emmanuel, um, if you look at banking in Ghana today versus 10 years ago, yeah. I guess you will agree with me that banking has improved immensely in Ghana. Um, when I first came, we didn't have, um, we didn't have executive wings or private banking or prestige banking or what have you in Ghana. Now it's all over the place. We have it. We have private bank. I mean, businessmen can now sit at the, at the leisure of their office and have um, bankers come to them and take trans and do transactions with them, right? Okay. It wasn't like that before. So this banking has gone a long way. Our vision has gone a long way as well. You look at our, term at our airport, look at our terminal now. It's an excellent terminal. It's a first class terminal. Okay. Before we didn't have that terminal. Yeah. So there's been an improvement in, in our sector. No, we as a people have improved. I mean, it's not... I don't believe we have not improved. We have improved. Okay. As to whether we want to compare ourselves to the Europeans or the Americans, that's a different ball game altogether. But we have improved. Okay. And who do we compare ourselves to? That's also debatable because we can decide. I don't want to compare myself to Nigeria. I don't want to compare myself to South Africa. Coast. Africa I want to compare Africa, myself to a bigger boy. To US. That's also fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we are. But the, the most important thing is we are moving ahead. Ahead. Yes. And right now we are progressing to our next stage. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Let, let's come. Uh, so right now, uh, after everything, what uh, are you bringing on board right now? Are you bringing? Are you setting up your own business? Are you bringing different setup, or maybe are you going back to? Maybe one day you think to maybe shifting from aviation to go back to bank again. Um, I, 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 for now, I will, I cannot tell you for a fact that I will never go into banking again. Um, we never say never, yes. but for now, I can always tell you, I can, I can tell you for now that aviation is on my mind. And, uh, as, as a former, uh, aviation expert from Panam, um, in Miami, um, I came in and I set up 
um, an aviation consultancy firm called okay. Afwing. Afwing. Afwing is in Ghana now. Okay. What does Afwing do? Let's talk about Afwing. Afwing was set up by me, um, and so right other. now we can see you are the uh, the main face of Afwing in Ghana. Yes. Okay. Now Afwing House also has a parent. The parent company is, is in the United States. Okay. So the Afwing in the United States and there's Afwing in Ghana. Afwing in Ghana is for the whole of Africa. Okay. This is the head, this is where it's based in Africa. This is the head. Yes. Okay. What does Afwing do? Well, the number one thing that we do for Afwing is we um, we are the only licensed uh, company through National Homeland Security in the United States to fingerprint any pilot that wants to go to the United States to study. Whether you are now going to become a pilot or you are going to continue further your education as a pilot. Bear in mind, pilots every so often have to go in and renew their license. That's called recurrent training. Now, if you decide um, I drive a Mercedes Benz and you want to go and drive a 505 Peugeot, you need to go back to school to get a license for the Pedro. That's what the aviation, aviation also do. That's yes. Okay. So it's not that I can drive a Mercedes, so I can yeah, drive you a Pedro. No, Pijo. you, you have to, to go forward. back and go and go and get a license. So we encourage, or we we and in the United States, if you're going to enter the United States now to go and study, you need to have your fingerprints done. They need to see your fingerprints in the United States before they allow you to come in. This is all because of 9-11. I don't know if you know, remember what happened 9-11. 9-11. The, the folks came, went to the United States to study, or to fly, and they thought they, they learned how to fly. <clears throat> and then they used the planes to go and crash into the World Trade Center, and they killed over 3,000 people. Okay. And so after that, the United States said, okay, we've learned a lesson. Foreigners, you can still come in, but we will fingerprint you before you come in so we know who you are okay Afwing, my company is the only company that has been given a license because we've gone through a thorough background to come to ghana and take care of the whole of africa any pilot that wants to go to the united states has to come here to be fingerprinted before they can go okay so that's one of the big things that Afwing does, Afwing does yes. in africa and yeah yeah okay. okay okay the other thing that we are doing is we are doing some training for um, flight attendants we realize that flight attendants in ghana um don't have the expertise what um the little airlines that, i don't want to use the word little but what the original airlines or the local airlines do mm -hmm. they hire you and then they train you well what about if i come in and i'm already trained can you hire me so we have that for you we'll train you how to become a flight attendant okay will also give you the necessary equipment in okay. terms of how to behave as a customer service okay. individual. Okay. Okay. The other thing that Afwing does is if you want to become a pilot and you are in university, we are giving you the opportunity to come through us. We'll find you a school in the United States to go to and we'll also arrange and help you find financial, get financial aid so you can go to school. Okay. Okay. Um, that is another another branch, branch that Afwing takes care of. Takes care. So all in this, this is what we are looking at. This at the end of the day, package. yes. At the end of the day, we are actually even looking, which would be in the future, of bringing some simulators in so that pilots here don't need to travel out there to train. They can use our simulators to train and um, save a lot of money by flying out. Flying out. So. Yeah. So, do you think it's going to be possible in Ghana to learn everything over here, to not move into outside the U.S. to go and learn? At the end of the day, that's our our focus. That's what we want to do. At so the end of the day, it's going to be a one-stop shop. Okay. Is it that one? Let's say, how, uh, what, what do you think? Is it going to take an, a year before you establish this kind of uh, all over what you are talking about? Maybe one day, we also get our own infrastructure, uh, infrastructure to fly it or maybe learn everything over here instead of us to move to Africa and maybe U.S. to go and learn? Emmanuel, I'll say as soon as possible. As soon as possible? Yes, we should have this here, as soon as possible. Okay. We're working on it as we speak. So, have you have you get in contact to a government or maybe any agency to come and support Afrink? We are in discussions, and uh, that's why I don't want to say too much about it. Okay. But as soon as possible, you would see some big things happen through Afrink. Okay. In, um, in, in in Ghana. If you have a minute, you might want to look at Afwing. Uh, Afwing Limited is what it's called. Um, and just read about what we do. Okay. Or if you um, your viewers would like to know more, 
um, you can share my number. Yeah. They can give me yes. a call. Um, yes. And I'm, I'll be more than happy to speak to each and everyone. Each and everybody. Okay. Yes. Okay. So right now, let's say on the journey of Afrink, let's give ourselves like maybe how many years before we see everything established, like the way you are giving us, because I know you, when you said this, you know you can do for us. So let's give how many years before we see everything established, like because Afrink is owned by a Ghanaian. Afrink is up and running as we speak. It's running right yes. now. Yes, it is. It is running right now. Um, if you have any individuals who want um, to learn how to become flight attendants, what have you, send them our way. Okay. Yes, send them our way. It's up and running. Okay. We are, so, we are open for business. Yes. So yeah. we will give the offering their Instagram handle, their Twitter handle, everything Absolutely. on the front of the Absolutely. screen. So if everyone who wants to be interested to fly, who wanted to learn, because me when I was child, I wanted to do but. I couldn't get the education background wall, so mm -hmm. I wanted to shift to do media. That's why, why I'm in back of the camera. So, uh, so uh, we are very happy. So let's 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 go to this past month. So do you think a Ghanaian can do a business in Ghana to be a successful more than staying outside and do that business? Yes, I have every faith in my uh, my, my 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 citizens, my colleague citizens. Um, what? can be done out there can be done here as well yeah. yes absolutely i mean Emmanuel, that's why we have universities the university of ghana is a prominent university very prominent university okay. and um if you have an opportunity to take a course there or go there consider yourself um, um it's an honor for those of us who went to school outside yes it's a privilege it, it was an honor as well but guess what if you ask me the friends the community the network you build going to this university and working in ghana is priceless Modern. not just university of ghana you have Asheshi, you have private universities you have uh, knusd you have the Coast yes 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 and we have very intelligent uh, lecturers here okay. very intelligent lecturers so why Absolutely. why every time because let me bring this in topic out because I remember one of my sister completed SHS and he got admission right. He wanted to travel, he wanted to study another or going back to university. But what a family said like, oh, right now, even when you go to school, you cannot get job to do. So mm -hmm. you better to put your certificate down and go and find different work to do. Why our parents or maybe our mothers, I keep saying this to maybe our young sisters or our brothers who completed SHS and get good admission to go back to university. Well, it's unfortunate if that's what is being said it's unfortunate I, I i believe that the sky is the limit for everybody go as high as you can okay because this world is a competitive world okay it's, it's competition if um my mother is telling me you don't go to school because even if you go and you finish you will get a job um that is only because maybe of her knowledge of understanding of how things work okay. but if you realize how things work is 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 the uh, the strongest will survive, okay. which means that the more education I have, the more I can eloquently speak what I have to say okay. in an interview. I'm going to be better off than who the next person who doesn't who gets uh, nervous and doesn't know what to say, right? Yes. And it's only because of the education that you get. So the more education you have, knowledge is power. Okay. You have more power. Okay. So I encourage everyone to continue to go to school okay go learn learn don't stop okay and when you when you stop read a book because knowledge is power knowledge is power because as for you even i'm sitting from i'm sitting behind i'm so happy to sit beside you from banking to aviation level so it's 100 percent. thank you you didn't learn one thing because maybe your dad said we want to do a banker you go and do your what your dad said but in future you do what you want what to do you want future. to do absolutely you have it i'm right, very Emmanuel. happy to talk to you today sir. you have it right Emmanuel very very happy so my pleasure uh let's see let's go to the end of the conversation yes. uh, so uh if right now somebody want to join afrink or somebody want to get in touch with afrink how the person can get in touch with you as easy is it going to be easy or is it going the person need to pay pick some forms or go to some entity to get so what we, we what we do i mean we are online okay okay and 
you know, I'm sure you share my my direct phone number as yes. well. I like to be involved in the day-to-day -day activities of the business, that's yes. just me. And so you will see me sitting at the reception. Okay. You will see me sitting in the classrooms. You will see me sitting with the students who want to come in. You see me sitting with the folks who are doing fingerprinting. That's me. Okay. I, I, I am a well-rounded person and my philosophy is be humble. Okay. No matter where you are in life, be humble. Okay. And be friends with everybody because you never know what will happen in the future. Okay. And once you are humbled, I'm a strong believer that the Almighty will raise you up. Amen. So with that said, Afwing is open for all. We are, we are not um, secluding individuals or saying we're going to this particular school because this school, they charge a lot of school fees. We are giving everybody the opportunity. And that was one of the things we wanted to do. The child who is in Navrongo, who doesn't have the opportunity to come and say, I want to become a pilot. A but pilot. you know, if he's given the opportunity, he could be the, one of the best pilots in the world. That is where we are trying to go to see if we can get them to where they need to get to. Okay. And um, inshallah, Amen. We'll get there. Yeah, I mean, so they remember yeah. Pastor Ampa. Yeah. Okay. So your last words to Africans. So the African, our diaspora, those people who are staying in Africa, who don't want, who staying out outside, who don't want to come home because they think, okay, coming to Ghana to set up a business, maybe you cannot be a successful, you cannot win. So being outside to pay a lot of tasks, what are you going to tell them? Your last words for them. <laughs> I am one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so right now you are you are here. You are setting up a business. I am one of young them. Ones in Ghana here mm -hmm. also are getting. No, you see, Emmanuel, the world is a little small village, and it's a round little village. We know what that means. One hand washes the other. Adam. This is the world we live in, yeah. and as much as people don't seem to understand that, this is the world we live in. So if I am from Ghana and I'm giving my best to the United States of America, the United States of America takes what I offer. They make, they get revenue from it, right? Because I pay taxes. Okay. My small country, Ghana, comes and says, United States, I need some money. United States, you know what? I'll help you. And because I like to help you. It goes around. Food. Yes, it's, it's, it's all interconnected. So whether I work in the United States, I work in Ghana, I think that it's where you have found yourself, you have found your niche. Take, advan make ad take, a take, make advantage, take advantage of that, that niche okay. that you have. Okay. That advantage is what is going to make you a better person. Okay. If at the point in time you say, I don't want to stay in America, I want to come back to Ghana, it's a free world. You can move. You can move. You can move. Okay. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So, but you know, we have a lot to offer in Ghana. Lots of there's a lot of things here too. You know, encourage those of us who are here and have done a great job. Because if everybody got up and left, there will be no Ghana, right? Yeah. So I, I I I I applaud those who have stayed and who have made what it is now. But like I said to you earlier, this is a better place than it was. Yes. 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 Ago. ago. Yeah. Okay. There's no two ways about it. Okay. Thank you. I don't want to bring my political inside. So thank you for. We can we can talk about your political insights. <laughs> I want to bring my political uh, insight. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, when you bring politics into these personal civic uh, duties yes. that we have to do, yeah. then it starts to hinder things. Yeah, that's and, what I want and, to say. And sometimes you know, it's, it's good if we take our political views off and just have an open mind, mind and think outside of the box. We'll yeah. do much, 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 better. much better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we wish Afrin. One day, me too, I will join Afrin. Absolutely, we're looking forward to you. I need to, to join Afrin. We're looking forward to you. I need to drive like former president, J.J. Rollins. You, you, you need to fly, uh, not drive. Drive, okay. If fly. you drive, you're driving a car. A car. Okay, so I need to fly from the... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to joining me, sir. Let's be talking. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for opening this business for our young one. Also, who want to be part of Absolutely. Afrin. So, we leave the contact into the screen so if you want to join leave every social media handle so can you search on facebook or maybe any instagram or afrink you can get them to be part of the afrink we have with me uh, one of the biggest the way you talk yeah i used to be in the us one day but one day maybe i will join his back to go so when i come i will start speaking in the in the get in the Thank you. I didn't say in it. Yes. The is 100%. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, sir. You're welcome. May God bless Take you. Care. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.